but let's just talk about it real quick, okay? You could say, okay, why did they why did they keep uh, Bryce Perkins? Why are you keeping three quarterbacks? It's really hard. You, you could have kept Kaiser or somebody. Here's why they kept Bryce Perkins. One, the guy can help you. First off, he's got versatility that is just beyond versatility, right? He ran a 4-5 at his pro day. Um, this is a guy that can hurdle guys. I mean, he's a super athlete. That's the first thing. The second thing is he's going to offer – ability that no one else in the quarterback room has with that athleticism the third thing is the familiarity with the offense learning Sean McVay's offense makes you an asset and so for teams that are running a Sean McVay Kyle Shanahan style offense they were probably going to look to claim Bryce Perkins he would not have made it uh through waivers and here's why okay Bryce Perkins knowing how to um basically knowing how to perform in this offense is very attractive but then when you look at his you know mobility and his athleticism and the fact that you know he had above a 70 percent completion percentage from yards 10 to 19 uh you know it, there's a lot there on top of the fact he had no scouting uh team uh, scout team experience he had no regular season experience and came in his first preseason game and really just looked like a model of consistency a pros pro as you know sean mcveigh would call him and a guy that just wasn't you know it, it did the moment didn't seem too big for him uh had his head on a swivel uh went through his first second third even sometimes fourth read um he did things that jerry goff who was wearing 16 last year just couldn't do so you look at that, you look at the Falcons losing A.J. McCarron for the year, and, you know, of course, keep in mind, you know, when you're talking about Arthur Smith, he's kind of part of that, in my opinion anyway, I'd say he's part of that, you know, LaFleur coaching tree, and so because of that, LaFleur is an ascendant of Sean McVay and, and Kyle Shanahan runs that same type of offense, so Arthur Smith running that same type of offense and losing his backup quarterback sure made them a prime candidate to pick up Bryce uh, Perkins, you know? And for people saying, well, Josh Rosen made the team, well, Josh Rosen might have gotten cut if they were able to claim Perkins. So I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, furthermore, the 49ers could have tried to claim him. Um, if you want to get familiarity uh, even more, um, you know, you could talk about, you know, let's just say the Chargers, you know? Um, now, everyone forgets Brandon Staley is a defensive coordinator, sure, last year. But Brandon Staley spent some time on the offense. And a big reason why Sean McVay brought him in is because he knew both sides of the ball very well. On top of that, his defense had to scheme against guys like Bryce, you know, Bryce Perkins in uh, training camp and what have you. So he's seen him. So that could have been an option. On top of that, you know, you look at the obvious, the Shane Waldron connection. You know, he worked with him. Uh, you know, Seattle, obviously getting a, a veteran, uh, not veteran, but getting somebody that's from their rival and their backup is Geno Smith. Come on now, you know? So I just don't think you were going to get Perkins back under any circumstances. People can say what they want, you know? There's going to be a lot of, well, you know, they could have gotten Perkins. All these guys got dropped. I really don't think so. And I'm glad that they, uh, I'm glad the Rams didn't try to test it because I really think they would have regretted it and uh, furthermore I love John Wolford as much as the next guy John Wolford because of John Wolford I was able to create a video called uh, a new hope so to speak a Rams new hope it was a Star Wars themed Rams video and that finally got demonetized after a year um, you know suck it to whoever did that but anyway um, but uh, you know, John Wolford, so to speak, like that video blew up and that's really what took my channel to the next level. So I love Wolford. Okay. I have nothing against Wolford, but let's just call it like it is his second game. We can talk about how dirty of a hit it was. And it was dirty in my opinion, but John Wolford got hurt in his second game. If John Wolford got hurt in his second game, Stafford got hurt early on in camp with the thumb. I'm not saying that Stafford's injury prone, but to not have a third guy would seem irresponsible, would it not? And so for me to have a third guy that knows your offense, knows a complicated offense, um, an important offense, and, you know, can work off script, Wol I mean, like, that's the thing that allowed Wolford to be successful in Week 17 against the Cardinals. That game could have been brutal. He threw an interception on his first play, a pick six, right? Favre did that too, by the way. But anyway, he threw a pick six on his first play and he responded and here's why he responded and here's how he responded because he was able to work off script 
things didn't work. So what do you do? You use what God gave you, right? Your God-given talent. And we know John Wolford can move around, and he can manipulate the pocket the way Jared Goff can't. And so because of that, it allowed him to gain confidence, allowed him to extend the play, and he was able to get comfortable, and then all of a sudden he got into a rhythm, and he looked really good making these very confident beeline throws to Van Jefferson or the the beautiful throw down the sideline to Cam Akers. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. I mean, Gerald Everett dropped the touchdown in the end zone, but we won't go there. Um, My point is that that's what Perkins would have to be. Being a third quarterback does not mean he's never going to see the field. He's actually one of the best third quarterbacks in the league, if not the best QB3. Essentially, you're getting a guy that ran a 4-5 who could be a Taysom Hill type of role if you wanted to dress him in every game. He could literally play that role. But furthermore, he comes in, he shows you against a first-team defense on the road, Vaughn Miller running at him. He's a capable quarterback, still making his first, second, and third read. And furthermore, he shows you, you know, late in games, Perkins magic. I mean, look at the the last game he played against the Raiders. They would have won that game. I mean, he, he, he brought them back. Bobby Evans, you know, he gets totally pushed down by a third or fourth teamer. Perkins is running for his life on like fourth and four, fourth and five. And he runs out. The pocket collapses. That's the ability on display. And that's what not every one of these guys, like, you can tell me Garrett Gilbert looked good or whatever in AAF or XFL or what have you. But I trust Bryce Perkins to keep a play alive more than I trust Garrett Gilbert and guys like that. So that's why I love this. It makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it, it uh, they were not going to get Perkins back. So the idea that, well, they didn't need to keep Perkins because they lost Kaiser. No, 